employees. I have had hundreds of customers tell me they applied some kind of natural voodoo treatment that a friend or family member told them about, and they believe it works. For right now, let's ignore the fact that I wouldn't even be talking to them if it actually did work, but we'll put that aside for now. These home remedies are part of our collective internet intelligence library of what we believe to be true. Why is that? Science has proved over and over and over and over and over again that almost all home remedies don't work. My 18 years of field experience has seen 0% of these work for the purpose of eliminating pests. With these facts in front of us, why do we still perpetuate and believe these lies we call old wives' tales? When you have a problem with bugs, you, you will try everything anyone tells you that supposedly worked for them. They're your friends. You're supposed to be able to trust them. Maybe you're short on the budget or don't want to uh, believe are dangerous chemicals in your home. It's grasping at straws. But why did your friends tell you that it worked for them when in truth it didn't? Let's examine that. There are several reasons why these remedies are believed, believed to work. Number one, the user doesn't want to admit they wasted their money on snake oil. We're pretty prideful people. We always need to have the appearance that we have this life game thing figured out. And that leads us to embellish the efficacy and satisfaction with products we purchase because we don't want to think want people to think that we got hoodooed for some snake oil. Mm -hmm. Number two. The user wants to be helpful by suggesting a cheaper or safer option, safer option to friends and family. I get it. We want to be helpful. We're, you know, we want to be good people, help people. I get it. Society is moving more towards buzzwords and concepts like green, natural, and organic. We're a nation scared to death of things our parents used and did with no negative consequences. America's being conditioned to fear anything created or synthetic. The truth is that some of the natural pesticides are much more dangerous or chemically exactly the same as the synthetic version. People are crying for natural and crying for organic products, but the concerns are worthless. These synthetic products are made from materials in our environment. Matter can either be created nor destroyed, so how they put together doesn't matter if they're molecularly identical. What's the point? They're exactly the same. A product labeled natural or organic is just a means to charge more for it, really. On top of that, most of these type of products, green, organic, and safe, oh, I don't use that word. These products have little to no effect on your original problem. Let's go one step further. Many of the natural products have a very strong odor and more potential. Let's say that again. More potential for irritation and allergic qualities. These products also have horribly deficient residuals. This means they're effective for less time, causing the need to reapply more often and exposing you more to it. No, thank you. I'll stick with what works. The main problem is what people think green or natural pesticide really means. It's much more political than anything else, so don't get caught up in the hype and the wordplay. Your pest control professional knows how to keep you safe. Recently, I've seen some promising develops in the area of natural pesticides, and I hope they continue to approve, because safety is always a concern. But right now, they suck! Number three, using home remedies while having a professional treat your home. This is the most irritating one on the list. Customers tell me all the time that what they did to treat the bugs is what did the trick. They ignore the fact that I've been treating the home 
Even some of the smartest customers I know fail to see the fallacy here. I guess I just don't get the credit for this one. I just, okay, you paid me for nothing. Number four. Don't you dare tell me my mama was wrong. She told me blah, 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 blah. Leave my mama out of this. She was an amazing woman. While well, I will not dispute your claim of motherly sainthood, your love and admiration has clouded your judgment. Don't forget that your mama was human and flawed, just like the rest of us. Her mama told her the same pack of lies she told you, and her awesomeness doesn't, ma doesn't make her all-knowing. Sorry. There's an old story about a young girl who was learning how to cook from her mother, and she observed her cutting the end off of a ham before placing it in the pan that could have easily fit the entire ham. So she asked her mama why she did that, and the response was, that's what my mother taught me to do. But realizing she didn't know the answer, she called her mama. So grandma says, well, that's what my mama always did. So they call great-great-grandma, or whatever, wherever we are now. And great-grandma's answer was that her pan was too short to fit the whole ham. Examine why you do the things you do and believe the things you believe, and your life will be much easier. Number five. I can't afford to have it done properly, so I'm relying on snake oil. This is a sad one, and I get it. I sympathize with a tight budget, but sometimes sucking up the cost can save thousands later. When I go to a home to inspect and quote for pest service, I often hear, when can you start? That's less than what I was spending on this stuff that didn't work. If you can't afford a service, oftentimes it's better to clean and save your money than to spend it on wasted treatments until you can afford it. We even have a budget service for those kind of situations. You know, <clears throat> elbow grease is free soap is pretty cheap and water might as well be free so there's no excuse and finally number six luck and ignorance of pest biology okay here we go pests come and go more in your home than you really want to know seriously it gives you nightmares most of these you never see, but when you do see the prodigal ant lost and trying to get home, the response is often overkill and unnecessary. The presence of one bug does not necessarily indicate an infestation. I am told all the time that something got rid of pests that didn't even remotely make sense. There was not a problem to begin with, but the believer assumes the only answer is what they did. Makes them feel good. They fixed it. Yay! Most insects in our world never bug us at all. But they do sometimes get lost in our homes. These do not warrant any action. More than sealing a hole. I am told all the time how someone put out mothballs because they saw a snake and they think the mothballs did the trick. <sighs> I'm so sick of this one. I always ask him, when was the last time they saw a snake was? And oftentimes they say, uh, oh, it was three or four years ago, or even never sometimes. So what makes you think that the one snake you just saw indicated you had a problem or indicated you had anything other than just that one snake you see in a blue moon. But yet you put mothballs out and you think it fixed it. Uh, well, guess what? You could have put out rat turds and it would have done the same thing. It had nothing to do with it. We believe the things we are told because we want to think that someone is good. Unfortunately... Often we just regurgitate things that we've been told without researching or even considering how silly they are. Things like uh, putting out mothballs for anything, dryer sheets in your pockets uh, for mosquitoes, or dryer sheets under the mattress for bed bugs, cinnamon, mint, flour for ants, penny in a bag in a water for flies, please. Glue traps for anything, diatomaceous earth, DE, borax powder for roaches. It's soap, people! Soap! It's friggin' soap! It's not pesticide. 
Vinegar for gnats and fruit flies. It'll kill them. It'll attract them. But it ain't going to fix the problem. Rubbing alcohol for bed bugs. You pour rubbing alcohol over me, I'm probably going to croak too. And foggers and bug bombs. I know, I know, I know. You are screaming at your computer screen right now saying, that works. That guy doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. I did it and it worked. And I suggest you rewind a little bit and look at some of those other ones. Look deep inside, really deep inside, and ask yourself, what really happened? I hate old wives' tales, but I love to kill the bugs you tried to kill with wives' tales. You're killing me, Smalls! No me moleste mosquito, and eat my burrito. No me moleste mosquito.